Is this you? <laughs> is this someone you know? Or is this something you have felt either in the recent past or not, not, not too long ago? Well, this is something that I face, not, not myself, but I see quite often. And if you think about what this person is feeling, well, apparently she's very overwhelmed at the moment. And what she's overwhelmed about, you might wonder, well, I think she's overwhelmed about everything. <laughs> And I guess this is what makes this old adage true, um, so much to do, so little time. Now if you think about this, this, uh, this is something that I, when I went into my, uh, my classroom, I noticed that there are a lot of students who also feel this. And if you think about all the technology that we have in front of us, you know, our mobile phones and no matter what not, a lot of these technologies still haven't changed this picture. This picture still remains the same. And if you think about this, you might wonder, why is this? And so you can imagine, I teach entrepreneurship and innovation, and I have to go uh, into a classroom, and I enter the classroom, and I have to teach someone to be innovative, and there's someone sitting exactly like this. You can imagine how tough that task for me is, right? <laughs> so, I'm gonna tell you a short story. This is a story about Lisa, one of my students who's sitting in the classroom like this, and I walk up to her, of course, as a concerned teacher, so I want to find out if she's okay, and I go and ask her, so Lisa, are you okay? Is everything all right? And she looks up to me and says, well, I'm actually frustrated, and I'm a bit overwhelmed at the moment. Now, I of course tell her that frustration is quite normal, because, just to give you a little bit of context in the course that, that, that I run, or in this entrepreneurship course, what we do is we ask students to spend a lot more time in the problem space. And what is the problem space? The problem space is where the students have to figure out the problem of their own. So I don't give them a problem. Now this is a bit challenging for them because for most of them, you know, they're used to problems being given to them. A lot of companies, many other teachers also give you a problem. But I ask them to actually figure out a problem of their own that they can relate to, that they can feel attached to, and that they think that they have the skills to solve. And that can be a very frustrating task. So of course, for me, it was not a surprise that she was frustrated, but, but I could see why she was feeling like this. So I go to her and, and ask, but you know, this is something that you shouldn't be surprised. This is something that, you know, I, I didn't tell you right in the start of the course. And she looks up to me and says, yes, but we have other things to do. I mean, I have a life to handle. I have other courses to run. This is not the only course. I have, uh, you know, uh, a life to lead. I would like to have time for my friends, for my family, for myself, and all of these things. And you know, I just can't handle it. And then I look back to her and say, "But I haven't given you the problem. You have put this upon yourself." And she realizes at that instant that yes, she has put this on herself. And then she looks up to me and says, "But you know." I would have preferred that you actually gave us the problem because that is, the, that is precisely the frustration because you haven't given me the problem. And, and then when she says this, she realizes herself that she actually is, um, has put herself in that spot. So I'm not to blame. So this is something that she has self-inflicted, right? So, but she gets them to the realization and then she says, okay, I'm going to go and uh, try and, and work on this. And she gets back to her group work. So this is what happens. But this doesn't stop me from thinking, what's, you know, what, what, what's going on? So on my, on my way back home, I'm starting to think about why is she feeling like this? And why do I actually not feel so overwhelmed? Because that for me, this picture for me is actually not a reality. It hasn't been so in a long time. So I don't tend to feel uh, overwhelmed. So, and then I started thinking about all, all the questions that people ask me. So, Raju, do you have 25 hours in a day? Or they ask me, uh, you know, are you okay? Are you taking care of yourself? Because you seem to be doing so many things. And of course, I'm doing a lot of things, but in the same amount of time, because everyone has the same amount of time. So, I started thinking why this could be. And then, of course, logically, the first thing that came to me was basically this image. If you look at this child here, what is he doing? He's probably playing a game. Or he's doing an activity that's really engrossed. And if you look at his eyes, he is so engrossed in that activity, he does not have, at this precise moment, he does not have the concept of time. Time for him is non-existent. It will only become existent when his mother comes in and snatches the phone away and tells him, you know, you're late for dinner. 
that's when you realize, okay, there is something called as time, and I'm alone. So, uh, but at this stage, so, but the thing is, scientists have studied this and found out why this is. And this is known as flow theory. So I'll tell you what is flow theory. Well, it's the degree of confidence that one has and in your own skills, and you plot that against the degree of challenge, that how challenging the task is. When you straddle the middle space, and that is the space between what we call boredom and anxiety, that's where you are in flow. And that's, that area is known as the flow channel. So this, this boy, he's, in, he's right now in flow, so he basically he's enjoying the activity. And that's when I realized this is what I do. I tend to enjoy all the activities that I do. Not, it doesn't have to be, I mean, a lot of this is, of course, popular in, in games, in, uh, you know, when you're playing music, when you do all of that, creative works as well. But, I, but some people also enjoy it during work, and I'm one of those who also enjoy work the same way, just like I enjoy games and private life, with the same amount of enthusiasm. And that's when I realized, okay, this is, uh, you know, th that, that's why I'm actually enjoying it. But that doesn't explain why I have time to do all the other activities. It explains why I enjoy one particular activity but it doesn't explain why I have time to do multiple activities. And that's when I realized that's probably because I have purpose. And, or I attach purpose to these things. So that's why I say that being in flow is great, but having a purpose is even better. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about in a, for the rest of this talk. So, I come back to you to Lisa. This is Lisa after the course is over. She has finished the course with great grades, she has uh, just won a, a Best Idea Award, not given by me, but by an external jury that I invite to evaluate student ideas. Now, I of course ask her, but, you know, uh, why did you, uh, did you actually do, give away all of the other things that you're frustrated about? And then she said, no, it's because I actually learned from the stuff that, that not, uh, not only from the course, but I also learned that if I give value to things that I value, I found some kind of purpose. And that's what I'm, I'm enjoying. And that's what you see here, because she says that she acted in such a way that she's completed the project in no time. For a person who was struggling with time two weeks ago, in two weeks now, she is not realizing that, you know, she actually thinks that she finished the project very fast. So, this is again showing you how what purpose can do. But is it only purpose that is doing it? I think it's actually both the combination of an entrepreneurial mindset that she learned during the course and opened up her mind, but also the, uh, the attaching purpose. And what is this entrepreneurial mindset? Well, an entrepreneurial mindset is something that we try and inculcate, and one of the basic core about it is that when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That's, you react to the present, you react to the change. So, and this, of course, I also teach that you need to do this, but what you also need to do is actually you make sure that you also use the rind and make sure you can make marmalade out of it as well. Because, you, opportunities are limited, and when they come to you, you need to be able to extract value from each of those opportunities. And that's when you can actually start doing so by having an open mind. So this is a, a way to tell you how one can combine an entrepreneurial mindset and, com and combine this with, uh, with, with purpose. So, another thing, if you look at successful entrepreneurs, is basically, uh, just say, that uh, they have a lot of choices that they need to make. They need to make choices and they need to figure out how they're going to use the time in the choices that they have. Now, a lot of these choices are, you know, they come to us at certain points. And we heard also that how you can always be a juncture at a pivotal point that you need to make these choices. And of course, one considers the time, but if one adds, adds purpose into that mix as well, it becomes much more easier to figure out how you can you know, move your life in that direction. So I'll take you to another story now, this time in an, uh, down in another, in another country altogether in South Africa, where I went there for a conference. In this conference, um, I met this student in Kosi at a break. Uh, conferences have breaks, and I was just at a break. And uh, he was basically having a stand, and there was this conference stand, which was, which was talking about uh, you know, the students had all, all their ideas and they had to pitch their ideas at some kind of pitching competition. And he was trying to tell uh, me about his great idea and he had five minutes and he told it to me in five minutes. And then the break was over, I, because the conference, the next conference session was starting and I had to attend that session. 
But I like the idea so much that where I saw great potential because it could change others' lives. And so I thought, okay, I need to make a choice here. Do I go and attend the session or do I actually help this guy because he seemed a little nervous before going on stage. So I decided at that juncture I'm going to give 15 minutes of my time and I'm going to help him uh, you know, prepare his pitch. He becomes less nervous. I even, not only that, I actually stay for the rest of the, of the whole pitch so that I can give him some moral support as well. And he also goes on and wins the pitching competition. Now he wins the competition and I'm not happy, I'm not just happy because he won, but I'm actually happy because now he gets more people coming to his stand and an idea that has a lot of potential has a higher chance of actually turning into reality because more people are going to hear about it. So, and, I, and of course I felt good about this. And this choice was driven for me by my purpose at that point, to help someone. So, then you might wonder, did I actually have a choice? Did I actually do it in such a way that I actually sacrificed something else in that purpose? At that juncture, yes. But what I also do is I, I tend to work with the concept of what I call time buffers. And this is basically, whenever I go to places, I leave time in my calendar to, to, leave, uh, you know, to, to, to allow me to, uh, to see things, uh, to, to, for opportunities that might just come up. And so, you know, leaving time for yourself for unexpected things to happen. And so that you have time to actually act on those unexpected things. So, what I did here was, I actually made a choice. When I made a choice to go for, uh, to help in Kosi, I had the choice of not going and networking with the people that I probably needed to network. But I did that later because I had a time buffer, and I got to do that anyway. So, and I think this is something that we all could, could maybe easily learn from and, uh, and try and add. But to be able to do that, we need to overcome another bottleneck that we all seem to have. And this is what I call the hamster wheel. A lot of us today, are in our hamster wheels where we are trying to do a lot of things, right? You, you might even think that you are great at multitasking and therefore you are, you know, but running, but actually even when you are multitasking, what you are only doing is running on the hamster wheel, just trying to finish one task after another, right? And to be able to spot the opportunities that come around your way, you need to be able to step out of the hamster wheel and, f and see what choices do you really have. Otherwise, you are just running, you are not looking. So, the hamster wheel is, is, is something that, that we don't maybe think about, but you just need to consider it. And because that, that is also what allows you to open these, uh, uh, open these opportunities for you. And it not only did it open these opportunities for me, but when I went and made sure that I met both in Kosi and I met, I met the networks that I needed to meet, a lot of doors started opening. One door after another to multiple things. And a lot of these doors led to new opportunities. So, and that got me thinking about doors. We are, a lot of us actually can, are probably faced with a lot of door choices. And so it just so happened that someone comes along and sh sends me a picture and says, this is like a, you know, one of these fun personality tests on the internet that you find these days. And uh, he sends this picture to me and says, Roger, you need to choose one door. And I ask him, why is that? Well, if you choose one door, it will tell you something about your personality. So but, then I told him, but I don't want to choose one door. He said, yeah, looked, no, no, you have to choose one. I said, why? Because that's the test. The personality test is designed in such a way. Then I looked back and said, okay, if you want my choice, this is how my choice is going to be. I'm going to go through that gate number one. Why is that? Because I see a boat in there. I'm going to go into the boat, I'm going to sail from that boat, and I'm going to come out in that lake here and come out of gate number five. <laughs> when I come out of gate number five, you're only showing me the way through this way, but I probably, when I stand this way, I'm seeing through another gate the other way that probably looks like that. So I'm going to go out that way, go to explore the opportunities that are there, and when I come back in six months' time, autumn is probably going to be winter, so it's going to look like this. <laughs> so, uh, but I must say, of course, that I, I couldn't cover all doors. So I, and that means you realize you cannot cover all doors, but you can try and cover as much as you can. So, I have covered these six doors with these opportunities, and found out that these things are actually opening up into new things. And that also makes me think about doors. The definition, a door by definition, is open or closed. This here is not a door, that's an archway. And an archway is always open. And it's just up to you to make, make sure that you take the step and go through that door. And go through this archway in this case, right? So, this is what you need to be able to, to do to explore opportunities. And it was based on this that I made what I call 
this purpose map, or the fabric of purpose. These are multiple purposes. Now, I don't think that everyone just has one purpose. I think we all have multiple purposes at multiple time points of our lives. And time only flows one way. We cannot go back in time, but we can actually, by attaching purpose to our actions, we can actually create time for things that matter, and so that we can actually explore our purpose space in, much, in, in a much bigger way. And that is what I have done when I have tried to explore all the opportunities that I've come across, driven by purpose. And this is what I call how I weave time into the fabric of purpose. And I think you can do the same. Thank you.